Shout out to Blue Apron for sponsoring this update. Blue Apron is the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the country. See what all the fuss is about and get your first three meals free when you visit blueapron.com slash the know. Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley. You guys, the latest No Man's Sky update has gotten a lot of rave reviews. It's really revitalized the game. Thousands upon thousands of people have been giving it another chance, but the PC version has had a few minor hiccups, especially when it comes to performance. Digital Foundry dug into the PC version and said that while the visuals were brilliant, they also said, still needs a lot of work, so expect more updates. Alex Vitalia wrote that even on a high-end system, there's a lot of stuttering and that it was a challenge to tweak the settings in order to optimize the game. He wrote, performance doesn't seem to be where it should be, even on higher-end GPUs, while basics like vSync don't seem to work properly. For a title that's improved so dramatically since launch, we genuinely hope to see Hello Games make one last push to make life easier for PC users. More than 5 million players have tried the Pirate's Life in Sea of Thieves, which is a pretty nice milestone for the Xbox One and PC game. Developer Rare announced the player total, along with the launch of the game's second major content update, Cursed Sails. That update is out now, and it brings a host of new features, including skeleton ships and the new Brigantine three-player ship. The ghost ships are gonna be a good one if you want ship-to-ship -ship battles, but don't always want to do PvP, because, you know, now you can fight skeletons. Who wouldn't want that? Rare also said the game's fans have racked up 300 million views on YouTube, more than 40 million live broadcast hours on Twitch. Rare's executive producer, Joe Neat, wrote, Seeing our creative community embrace the possibilities that Sea of Thieves presents is an inspiration to everyone at the studio. And on behalf of us all at Rare, I'd like to thank everyone who's been a part of this amazing adventure. Pretty exciting, gonna check it out again. Sea of Thieves! fun gameplay loop, but the kind of thing where you just have been waiting for more. So if you've been waiting for more, good news, now there's more. And get ready to play with your buddies in Stardew Valley. That's right, so excited. The long awaited multiplayer update is out officially today. It is out of beta for Steam, GOG, and Humble, according to a tweet from Chucklefish Games. The multiplayer mode will allow you to do all kinds of things with friends like four player farming, mining, fishing, foraging. Everyone lives in their own little cabin in the host farm, and you can even marry each other if you really want to. Isn't that nice? As for consoles, Chucklefish has said it's coming soon for Switch, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. We know that the Switch is going to be the first console to get the multiplayer first, but we don't have a timeline on that. Just that's the extent of what we know. Regardless, I'm so excited. Time to get back into it. I've got so much use out of that game. Holy crap. After a high profile case of a Steam game creating fake Team Fortress 2 items for scamming, Valve's making a couple changes to try and stop that kind of scummy practice on their platform. You might remember that the game Abstractism, which we talked about in a recent update, was recently banned from Steam in part for creating fake items that looked exactly like Team Fortress 2 items, and then also there was that whole little issue where it secretly installed crypto mining software on your computer. Uh, but as far as the fake items go, Valve's making a few changes to fight that. Steam now warns players who are making a trade that the item is from a game they've never played before or if it's a game that's new to Steam. Valve's also now requiring approval for app name changes to in-game items, so hopefully that will also curb scummy developers who are trying to trick gamers. Either way, it's good that we're going to see some movement on this, that we're going to see those kinds of improvements. I know it's not a good look for Valve, but I'm glad to see them doing something about it. We got a date for Undertale's Switch release, so get excited for that if you haven't played it yet, or if you're waiting to play it again, and uh, if you're in Japan, anyway. Uh, the game's going to be coming to Japanese players September 15th in a variety of forms. Physical copy of the game is going to cost 4,000 yen, or about 35 bucks. The digital eShop version is priced at a little more than $13. There's also a pretty cool collector's edition that costs around $78 that comes with the game, a two-disc collector's edition soundtrack, a booklet featuring six songs with annotations by creator Toby Fox, a brass music box locket, and one of six random bookmarks. The game was announced during a Nintendo Direct in March, still no word on a Western release, but hopefully we can look forward to that pretty soon. If you haven't played Undertale, it is definitely worth it because it's just unusual and crazy and weird and it's a lot of fun and it's very, very charming. 
The newest DLC for South Park The Fractured But Whole is out now and it's called Bring the Crutch. And it's an homage to 80s horror movies, with the boys going to an abandoned summer camp called Lake Tardikaka. You'll also be able to gain the powers of a new class called The Final Girl. That's also a reference to old school horror movies, which always seem to end with just one person standing. Ubisoft wrote, this superhero class brings new combat tactics and traps to take down spooky enemies. After saving Lake Tartikaka, players will be able to bring their new powers and buddy to the rest of their superhero adventure. And that DLC, it's out now for $11.99, so if you've been missing your South Park gaming, get to it. Two Splinter Cell games are now backwards compatible on the Xbox One. Major Nelson, aka Larry Herb, director of programming for Xbox Live, said recently that Splinter Cell Blacklist and Splinter Cell Double Agent are now backwards compatible on Xbox One. Both were pretty popular for Xbox 360 back in the day. Splinter Cell Blacklist came out in 2013, and it's the sequel to Splinter Cell Conviction. In Blacklist, you play as Sam Fisher, obviously, as he tries to stop a terrorist group called the Engineers. Splinter Cell Double Agent, you again play as Fisher as he's trying to infiltrate a terrorist group that's set up a headquarters in the US. Definitely some cool additions to the Xbox One's backwards compatible list. It's been a huge strength of the console. I really would like to see more backwards compatibility on other consoles consoles, it's just nice to be able to go back and experience some of these games again, especially since it's been so long since we've got a proper Splinter Cell. Come on, Ubisoft, bring it back, please. That weird sounding standalone Joker origin movie DC's making with Joaquin Phoenix, uh, yeah, that's getting weirder. Variety reports that the famously grumpy stand-up and hugely influential podcast host Mark Maron is in talks to join the cast of Joker. If the deal takes, he'll be joining the previously cast Robert De Niro and Francis Conroy. A variety adds that Maron will likely be playing the booking agent for De Niro's talk show host and says he plays a part in booking Phoenix's character, an aspiring comedian, for the show, and that somehow puts him on the road to becoming the clown prince of crime we all know and love and hate and love to hate. The film, currently simply called Joker, is gonna be the flagship for a darker, grittier offshoot that's not technically connected to the larger world of the DCEU the way we've been seeing the last few films, which seems like this is the new trend for DC. They don't all have to go together and fit together and feed into each other, uh, which, I don't know, this could be cool. I'll be really interested to see what they do with it. I love Mark Maron and Glow, he's awesome. So look, I'm all about this. The Incredibles 2's added another box office milestone to its already impressive record. The Pixar sequels officially crossed the $1 billion box office mark thanks in part to overperforming in China. Incredibles 2 already has the US domestic record for biggest opening weekend for an animated movie. This is gonna be 2018's fourth billion dollar movie, three of which are Disney releases. The other two would be Black Panther and Avengers Infinity War neither of which are a crazy huge surprises to a lot of people probably. The only other studio in this exclusive club for this year is Universal with Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. There can be only one explanation for the success. People around the world just can't get enough Frozone. Right? Right? Also, there's an amazing scene with a raccoon. You should see it. All right, that's it for this roundup. Let us know what you think of all the news in the comments down below. And to make sure you get all the updates from every corner of the internet every weekday, like this video. If you're new around here, subscribe to the now. Thanks to Blue Apron for sponsoring this update. You wanna get better at cooking? There is no time like the present. You don't have to keep putting it off because Blue Apron gonna make it easy for you. They're the number one meal kit delivery service in the US and there is a reason for that. It's because they deliver fresh pre-portioned ingredients, step-by-step -step recipes right to your door and every meal can be cooked in 45 minutes or less, which is very nice. Plus their menu changes with 12 new meals every week so you don't keep repeating the same thing over and over. There's always something new to try and they're flexible. Maybe you're busy one week, you don't want as many meals, that's okay. Okay. They've also got different plans, uh, two person plans, family plans, my favorite new addition, the wine plan. I like Blue Apron because I was never much of a cook growing up. I knew spaghetti. That was about where my expertise stopped. But I do enjoy the process and I've been trying new things cooking. So it's been a fun process and they do have all these really cool recipes that I wouldn't have even known how to start without them. And also, you know what? It's summertime. That means it's the perfect opportunity to break out your grilling skills or develop some. They've got some really cool options uh, from cheeseburgers with spicy slaw, which sounds very fancy for a cheeseburger, or seared chicken and techie barbecue sauce, and beyond. Like I said, there's 12 every week. If you want to try it out, Blue Apron is offering our nobodies your first three meals for free. Just go to blueapron.com/the/no, and all that will be applied when you redeem the offer on their site.